All right guys, so it is the next day and we are building the diff. So I did a video before stripping the diff down and everything you need to do and know and getting it ready for a diff overhaul. We've got Ben here. He's back from America and he's brought me a cool little present. Check this out. Extendo ratchet. That is really cool. Also, uh, seconds of the baton. <laughs> That's it. See, so don't fuck with you. So, uh, Ben's the uh, guru on building these diffs. So. Had practice runs. Yes. Yep. Is your video out yet? Actually, probably it's, is by the time this is out. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. gotta get it out before you. <laughs> yeah, so, that was, what should we title that? The 24 hour diff build? Yeah, that's it, round the clock diff building. Yeah. yeah. That was a marath marathon diff build. Was. There you go, yeah. Just right. like the one on the U. My like, U. Actually, just like all of them. Yeah. Except this one. But this one won't be, this one will be really quick because Ben's got to be out of here by four today and it's now about nine o'clock, so. Good thing is we can build the pumpkin and I can put it in later because I do want to kind of clean this up more. So I didn't get a chance yesterday, so. Yeah, everything's ready, as you probably saw in the last video. Case has been painted. Got all the parts cleaned up, ready to go. We're gonna have to machine that down, aren't we? Yeah, to, From memory. to clear the locker body. Yep. So we're gonna have to take a bit off. Sham for the end. Mm. It was at this moment that he knew. Man, this is worn as fuck. Really bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, See here, that's the, that's supposed to be oh, the thickness shit. there. That that ridge is not meant to be there. Wow, that big ridge. So that that would be the drive side, where um, they haven't used good quality oil, or the oil's really low. You see here, down here in the root, that that Ew. step there. So this tooth is a lot thinner than what it should be, and that's what can happen if you don't run enough oil, or if you don't have um, the EP additive. That's why it smells like really really strong because it's sulfur which is heat activated EP additive the best which smell. prevents this type of wear to here yeah where the engagement finishes there's no way I'd waste a set of bearings putting on that unless you have to because what, what will happen is because the roots so thin it'll be noisy when we set it up and you also run the risk of cracking the gear see look, look down there that. that that's worn like three mils See here, the here, there. Yeah. 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 How's your bearings? Uh, you see, it's a little discolored, so it has been running a little bit low on oil. But mm. I'd say the oil that they were running wasn't the right high point. High point. It would not like. surprise me because the uh, so previous owner didn't know too much about. It's not, it's not hugely worn, but yeah, I'd say it's not the right oil that they've been using. <laughs> you done well. That was the only way I could get it off. Yeah, but that's that. That's definitely fucked. I wouldn't put that back in. Actually, it's probably a good thing that we pull it out because um, if you kept running it like that, eventually it would fracture. Well, guys, this is why it pays to do things properly. I suppose the um, other thing is as well, you never really got it up to highway speeds to hear no, if no. it was whining or howling no. or anything. But yeah, that's classically worn. Yeah, see that here? If you look this way into it, you can see. Yeah, it's like a double how... step. Yeah. Yeah, so you reckon that's purely just from poor lubrication, not actually gear yeah. mesh issue? No. Um, I'd say that would be from having not the right EP additive because what happens when they when they design these gears is to get the gears bigger they offset the pin so they run off they run lower like that off center yeah and when you run them off center like that they have a sliding action rather than rolling so they're yeah. always running against each other that's why you need that's why high coil oils um, when you buy them, they say like for high point differentials because they have a lot of anti-wear and EP additives to prevent that yeah. wear when you slide. And besides these diffs are known anyway for cracking gears like I did. Yes. Um, so how much am I up for for a 
I was just gonna say this whole thing has got expensive more ex it just increased by about 500 Aussie. Oh shit. Roughly. I think it's like 300 US for, yeah. a, for a gear set, which is a Nitro. The brand is Nitro that we use. Yeah. Um, and what they do is, which you'll see, I did have it pegged as a topic for a video, but um, the factory is a 411 diff gear. So that means that the pinion turns 4.11 times for every time the ring gear turns. Yeah. Um, and there's various ways you can do that in different ratios, different teeth configuration on the ring gear and on the pinion. So f factory Toyota, they want it to be quiet. They have more teeth um, on the ring gear and of course more, on the, more teeth on the pinion to give you that ratio. But what happens is it's a certain diameter. So if you increase the number of teeth, the teeth gets the teeth get thinner through here, which is the root. And yeah. That's the root. So this gets thinner to fit the same number of teeth or the, the more number of teeth on the same diameter gear. But the Nitro gear set, they choose one step down so you have less teeth, which means it's slightly noisier, not that you'd notice with no. all terrains and all the rest. No. Um, and it makes the teeth uh, wider at the root, so they're a bit stronger. So that's a good thing all round. Awesome. But just so that's gotta come from the States? Yep. It doesn't take that long to get here. Okay. I better order that right now. An oil seal, good. So those are my wheel bearings, which we'll do as well later on. <laughs> Does that not not fit? You have the bearings. We should also check the bearings. Yeah, classical spacer. Something not right. It's a fair bit different, isn't it? Yeah, we'll have to check that. Might have to turn it down. Fit. Uh, should do. We have to check the bearing numbers on the on the diff carrier because some of them are 50 mil and some are like 48 mil. The older ones are smaller, so the bearing kit might not be right. So we have to check that. Check the pinions. Check the housing. Yeah. Before we do the parts order, and you are missing one of the little pieces because mine's the same setup, but there is a um, oil control ring in between the two bearings. This piece here runs in between the pinion gears, like sit somewhere in there. I never had anything. So this one, this one got a little bit damaged, so I ordered a new one, but it's still sort of okay. But you want to have a look at the EPC, because that is there. See, that's my pinion. Do you reckon we can use that? I think it's a different gear ratio. We'll check those, they're the same. Yep. Pitch is the same. Diamond is the same. So, for those of you, and there's what Ben did to his rear diff, which you can check out. Have you put the backstory in your video? No. Or is I that another one to build, come? That's a different one. Oh. That's the one about my numpty driving and, yeah. <laughs> and the consequences of that. But yeah. Consequences of not having a locker. At the end of the day, kind of had to choose between mechanical damage or um, water ingress, and I'll choose mechanical damage every time. Yes, a lot easier to fix. A lot easier to fix. But anyway, there's a story <laughs> on that and that's coming up so uh, you can see what not to do when you're driving. Yeah. Or install a locker first. And like me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need a front locker too, so we'll get yeah. there at some stage. Yeah. Front locker is a big thing for IFS, isn't it? Yeah. From what I've heard. Yeah. And like um, on your um, off-roading one, when you see I come out of that bank embankment, I would have made it except I got hung up on the rear and, yeah, and the front, no and the front wheel's just spinning, yeah. so yeah. Or maybe different line or Max Tracks. I have Max Bigger Tracks lift. now. Bigger, Bigger lift. lift. Bigger lift. Yeah. Whole bunch of things that we could if do. If you had another two inches, that would have been... Easy. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to diffs. So, um, service manual. So we're looking at the service manual and uh, just checking through. So this is the one that I did for, for the Prado, uh, but the diffs are the same. So I've circled all the replaceable part, well, all the parts that are um, service parts that you should replace. So like the new nut, new seals, um, new bearings. We're just looking, Here's the, the surf diff doesn't have this oil storage ring here, but it's probably worth having. Um, and we're just checking all the parts. The other thing we noticed is his new diff kit diff bearing kit, the collapsible space which is here, seems to be a totally different size to that one. So we'll have to check. The other thing is, 
um, we also need to check that the bearing kit that came, which is here, fits the locker. So yeah, there's um, a bit of there's a bit of discrepancy because people are saying there's 48 mil and 50 mil. Yeah. Everything are. I saw showed them all the same. Yeah. On the Amayama schematic, yeah. so. The older diffs are 48, I think, um, in a diameter bearings. Yeah. The new ones are 50 mils. The locker is made for 50 mils, so we're gonna make sure the bearing kit's, kit's right yeah. for that. So we'll check it, uh, measure everything, and then we'll have to do a parts order to get all the yeah. missing bits in. It's totally different. Forty-two. No, I, I think I zeroed it wrong. <sighs> Fifty. Yeah. And out of curiosity, what were these? Fifty. Whew. Forty-nine something. Okay. So cool. what, what's T R one O one double zero eight O two? These are forty-five. So on multiple fronts, it wasn't happening today. No. I think one of the golden rules I always um, advise when we do something like this is we always check the bearings, we always check the seals, we check mm -hmm. all the components before we start doing anything. That way we know, like you don't want to be halfway through a build and then you've run out of components or you just don't have all the bits and pieces on hand or you don't have the right things to check. So was that definitely not an LSD? This? Because I had two options to buy. I could buy the LSD or the non-LSD kit. I'm pretty sure I bought the non-LSD. That's non-LSD. It's just a um, open diff. Okay, well, we're doing fuck all today. The most productive thing we'll do today is get some parts ordered, I think. Hmm. Right guys, so here's what I bought. It does say here, rear, di rear diff rebuild for a 130 series surf. And you can see down here, surf, uh, rear diff, LN130, that's what I've got. So this is the non-LSD version. So I wonder whether I have to get the LSD version. So we've got some revelations. Enlightened. Okay. Give us a lowdown. So when we checked all the parts, we double checked the um, part listing for what should be in a surf. Um, and we've also compared what came out of the um, surf diff to what came out of the product because I kept all the bearings. So here's Good a idea bringing those two, by the way. Absolutely, here's a plus for hoarding. Um, <laughs> so all the parts that were used, so even the little spaces that are made for pulling bearings and everything is in this kit. So these are all the bearings that came out of the Prado diff, the Prado 120, 1KZ um, diesel diff. So all the bearings are the same size. So the pinion bearings, which were, were different in the kit, they're bigger on the, on the Prado diff, um, even though the pumpkin still fits into the same axle. Uh, they have an upgraded um, bearing set for the pinion. So there they are there. The differential center carrier bearings are 50 mil. They're there and they are the same as the Prado as well, which are these ones. So what we're figuring is that maybe someone in the past has swapped the diff center, so the original one failed and they've just got another one from a wrecker and slotted it in, um, which would explain why it doesn't match the build year of the cut. But there you are, it's one of those little things that, that can happen, especially when manufacturers have running upgrades, so the diff pumpkin still built bolts is still bolting to the same hole here in the axle, but the internal construction of the diff pinion is different. Mm. Um, and, the, and the counter bores and everything else. So the good news is you have the best diff pumpkin, like in terms of upgraded bearings and bigger sizes and all that. Yeah, that the is good. downside is we can't do anything today because we need to order new bearings, we need to order new ring gear, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's so, a shame they didn't swap the whole rear axle and give me disc brakes on the rear from the Prado as well. well that could be That's all I can say. That could be an upgrade for later on if you uh, measure the flange yeah. to flange, the trailing arm locations and the seats. Yeah. It'd be a pretty easy swap, it'd just be bolt in. No mate, full nine inch. Yeah. <laughs> Ford, Ford nine, nine inch. inch. 
Well, I, yeah, I didn't bring the Prada today, but I could have just tape measured it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't want to be doing this. Oh, I've done enough crazy shit on my other cars. You know, no over there. Unless you actually need to have this brake. Yeah. This car is just reliable and simple. Well, that's that's the starting plan. Yeah. I know well, it's going it, it, to change. At least it's change. a factory Toyota part. And there's yeah. probably more Toyota Prado rear axles floating around out in mm. the bush than they are yeah. surf axles. Just sitting out there in the bush. Yep. <laughs> From all the other failed diffs. Let's go order some parts, eh? Hey? Right, guys, so we've just been looking for um, gears. So I don't think we can use the nitro ones that Ben was using on his Prado. Well, actually, maybe we could. You can, they're just more. Because they're four, five, six. Yeah. But the ones, they're the same tooth count as this Motive gear, which is um, right there. Um, that's the price, 185 US dollars, so that's probably what, like 220 or something. And then I've just gone, you know, out of curiosity, we'll have a look in Australia. Look at the prices of this, here's the exact same competitor, $505. What's your opinion, should I do, it's the same teeth count, so. Same tooth count, I reckon we'll just go the motives. Yeah. Um, in the, when I did the Prado one, the Nitro actually had um, a better tooth ratio, so the teeth were thicker. Uh, but in this case, the motive seemed to be... Because well, yours is 411. Mine's a 411 ratio, not yeah. a 456. Yeah. Um, but we'll do a little bit more research and then we'll decide and get one underway. All right. All right, so it's all coming back to Ben after his month partying in America. And, <laughs> and it was almost exactly a year ago that I ordered the gears for um, the Prado gear. Yeah. Yeah, so. You know what I was thinking as well, by the time we put this on the dyno, it'll be pretty much a year since we dynoed the ute and had yes. actually that motor, engine I should say, ingester and injector clip, which is now a mock-up for uh, some hectic manifolds that I'm gonna build, but get this done first and I'll move <laughs> to that stuff. But anyway, what else have we so, found and slash remembered? Something else to be mindful of, depending on which brand of gears you get, the nitro gears are cut for 29 um, spline pinion. Coupling. Which means? Flange coupling. <laughs> So that means that um, on here, the Nitro gears have 29 splines. So there's two types for Toyota, there's 27 and 29. That's the, 27, isn't it? Yeah, the earlier ones are 27, so there's 27 splines there, which fits um, this coupling, and that slides on fine. Now, in 2003, Toyota switched from 27 splines to 29 splines. And in this box is my original Toyota one out of a 2005 120 series. Show us the damage. Austin was hiding that, showing you this <laughs> side. So we've cleaned all of them off. But anyway, to the point, this side here has 29 um, splines, which makes this section a bit thicker and also incompatible with this dry flange. So it doesn't fit. So if we were going to order the Nitro gear set uh, for the Surf, We'd have to get a new flange coupling or one from a um, from a, a Prado 120 or something like that. But also the universal flange that's sold um, in the States for their for their Toyota applications is the wrong PCD for the dry shaft that's in the surf. So we've had a whole other kind of issues and problems. So what we're gonna do is make sure that we order the three, four, five, uh, three, sorry, four, four, five. Restart. We're, we're gonna make sure that we order the 456 ring gear and pinion with a 27 spline um, coupling yoke. So, And it says it's good for big tyres and big power, both of which we're going to go eventually, so they said it. Now that we know that, we can go back and click buy now with confidence. Riggers of big tyres and high horsepower. Remember this video when it breaks. <laughs> Alright, let's send it.